While I was working on the map code for my RPG and waiting for everyone to vote on the features to add next, I thought I should start getting some things together to soup up my Commodore 128 for use in the native part of testing and production of my game. It seems to me that a good place to start is to see if I can get one of the CMD20 hard drives from the Stone Collection working. I found them around this time last year as I was preparing the collection for transport to my shop. So I saw these just kind of under the cover when I was doing my first tour. And this looks really interesting. There's a Super Graphics Gold card right there. Isn't that neat? No, actually, that's interesting, but this is fascinating. Three CMD HD20 hard drives. So they're kind of reminiscent of the old hard drives that I had on my Amiga back in the day. That was a Super 500. So I'm going to go see what these are about, and I'll get back to you in just a minute. For me, it'll be probably weeks. For you, it should be a second. So back in the day, I never dreamed of having a hard drive for my Commodore 64 or 128. I mean, that was for rich people. I'm hoping that these drives are working, so let's take a look and see how they're doing. If I do have to do any repairs, it'll be easier because some long lost service documentation was found in Carl Stone's files. So as I was combing through a box of files, I came across this folded sheet of paper. At first, I thought it was yet another Commodore 64 schematic, but I was pleasantly surprised to find that it's a full schematic for the CMD series hard drive controller dated March 12th, 1990. I quickly discovered that this schematic was not available online, so I went ahead and had it professionally scanned since my scanner sucks, especially when dealing with large format prints like this. One thing I thought was cool was that they named their pals, as you can see here, Julie and Shirley. I wonder who they were. The scan is available now on archive.org. I'll put a link in the description. And I really hope this helps some people with their CMD restoration projects. Before I power it up for the first time, I really need to check the power supplies. This uses the exact same pinout as a 1541-2 or 1581 drive. Although some Commodore external floppy power supplies don't provide the necessary one amp on the five volt rail. This looks great. The specified output is actually 5.2 volts, so we're spot on and the 12 volt looks good too. Will it work? Do I want to know? Time for a moment of truth. Let's see what happens. So I don't have the floppy drive connected. I have the CMD connected to the 64. Powering it on for the first time in, I'm going to guess, 25 years. Drive sounded a little chuggy at first, but then it spun up. Now I believe this is device 15, right? Well, that was not what I was hoping for. For a tried and true method at a time like this. Read the manual. It can help. A lot. Okay, I played around with this for a little while and it's just not working, but I'm pretty sure it's just the actual disk drive. So let's try another one of these drives and see how it's doing. And in three, two, one, here we go again. And the drive is spinning down and give it an error. All right, one last gambit here. I have a third physical drive that came out of one of these CMD20s that went to somebody to use for a BBS. So I'm gonna hook this loose 49 meg drive up and see how it works. So turn it on. on the computer, turn on the monitor. The CMD HD series hard drives are really interesting. They actually add SCSI to the Commodore 64 and 128. And in addition to including the drive, they provide an external SCSI port, which is connected to the Commodore 64 over a serial port in most cases. They also included the drive portion of Jiffy DOS, so all a computer owner had to do to take advantage of that speed was to also have Jiffy DOS installed in their computer, which I do not at the moment. You could get even faster transfer rates via a special parallel cable if you had a RAM Link memory expander installed. CMD began producing these drives in 1990, and the initial price point was around $600 for this 20 megabyte version. 
That's about $1,400 today. The 100 meg version was about $1,300, which is a whopping $3,000 today. Production ended around 2001, at which time there were models available with up to 2 gigabytes. In the future, I want to install a SCSI to SD device in place of the physical drive for reliable storage for all my compatible machines. Who knows, maybe it'll work with this VIC switch. Somehow I doubt that's a good idea. Okay, hey, we've got something here. So I hit the swap eight. Native One is the name of the drive. It's got lots and lots of stuff on it. Well, that's cool. There's a lot of stuff on that drive. I spent a little bit of time excavating the contents of the drive and I found some things that were really interesting. There's a folder with all the software for the Promenade EEPROM burner that I used in a recent video, including this cool interface for it. I found a few games, including Arkanoid and Star Fox for the Commodore 64. There's also some directories with the local users group disk of the month files and a lot of utilities for the hard drive and just so much more. So at this point, this hard drive is not sounding good at all. So I decided I really need to get it archived before the spinner eventually fails. So I went down a giant rabbit hole. I've tried a few things, but I'm still wandering the burrows. So what I think I'll do is make a video soon showing the process of archiving the drive and installing a SCSI to SD device in its place. I also ordered a Jiffy DOS ROM set for the Commodore 128D. And then as I was reading through the instructions, found out you need to disable that if you have a RAM link because it already has Jiffy DOS included. Go. So in the near future, I'm going to properly pimp out the Commodore 128D with a RAM expansion. I'll install the CMD20 hard drive with a Zulu SCSI in it so that I have a nice, reliable hard drive. Do you have any suggestions of other upgrades I should make to this machine? I really want to thank everybody for the incredible response to the DDM video I put out recently. Obviously, I need to rethink a few things given how widely reported on it was. I expected the usual 500 to 1,000 views not to be picked up by Hackaday, Ars Technica, PC Gamer, and so many others. It was mind-blowing. I'll have a video next week explaining how I plan to update things more often on that project without skimping on my existing projects. I am also deeply grateful to the new patrons who joined us this month. I actually had to get a new ticker, as you can see here. They've allowed me to go ahead and order a couple of parts to get the Commodore 128D properly put back into service as a working machine instead of just as a hobby game machine. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Yeah, I got some hobby game machines around here, don't I? So you can check out the Commodore 128D's restoration right here, and thank you for coming. Gotta love allergy season.